Well, uh, in this video, I will be discussing regarding uh, Green's function and the Klein-Gordon field. So, rather Green's function of the Klein-Gordon field. So, uh, so what is Green's function? Let's uh, quickly take a look. So, Green's function helps us in solving inhomogeneous equations involving a differential operator that is L of x here. And we need to, we are interested in solving such an equation, uh, the, what is the solution of u of x such that f of x is a known function given that uh, so we know f of x now for this we aim so to get this final result what we say we aim at solving such a particular uh, configuration uh, so what it means is that we use the we say that which kind of a function this is the green's function x and y will solve this particular delta function equation so now why this is interesting is because suppose uh, the Green's function is known, if the Green's function is known, then I can readily say that u of x will be of this form, integral dy, g of x comma y and f of y. So I, I have removed the homogeneous uh, part of the solution from here, which is also responsible for different choices of control. So now if I operate, why this is a solution is simple. Because if I operate with L of x, we can see that due to the fact that this differential operator acting on g of x producing delta function, we will finally get f of x. So, so the in the end of the day, the Green's function uh, is a function of two variables uh, that helps us in solving this kind of an equation. So now if L of x is the Klein-Gordon uh, operator, so that is del mu del mu plus m square then I need to find this g of x that solves this thing but with a particular factor uh, because uh, you see um, because uh, there will be some uh, some iota and uh, minus one mess uh, on both sides so what we need is we need such a solution now uh, so that's what I have written here so uh, we need such a solution now what uh, if we ask we need such a solution we can uh, get such a solution by doing a Fourier transform so what we do is uh, we recognize that energy is i del t and the momentum is uh, 1 over i uh, del x bar so these are the Fourier transform variables and in that sense this is del 0 square minus del x square plus m square what this means is uh, it is of the form of minus omega p square which is the energy part plus p vector square plus m square or in other sense it is minus of uh, p mu p mu minus m square so what we finally get if we do a Fourier transform we get minus p mu p mu minus m square is equal to minus uh, times the Fourier transform of the Green's function which we don't know we call it g tilde of p times we will get minus i times 1 because this delta function Fourier transform is just one. So with this we see that the Green's function, Fourier transform of the Green's function is i over p square minus m square. Now this is very uh, interesting in the sense that now if I uh, uh, transfer this back to the position space, if I transfer this, so this is the Fourier transform. So uh, I will urge, so this part is not correct in the sense that I have I have already written the transform but still I am writing the Fourier transform. So this is the Fourier transform and this is the final uh, uh, taking it back from the momentum space to the position space using e power minus i p dot x minus 2. So this is the, uh, this is the, so this is exactly, this is this integral is exactly the integral for the Feynman propagator or the advanced uh, propagator or the retarded propagator what we have discussed in the previous video. So we see that the integral form of all these propagators is exactly the Green's function. So the Green's function, the Feynman propagator is an instance of the Green's function of the Klein-Gordon equation. Now uh, where do this uh, differ is that in the denominator I can put these different terms and then take a limit epsilon tending to zero to create these various uh, propagators or the these various instances of the Green's function. Now, uh, we will now uh, discuss an example, but one thing is important in this case, when I am taking the Fourier transform, we see that the uh, the time space is picking up, is the, the time space Fourier transform has a factor of e power i p t, 
but the position space has a Fourier factor of minus i p x. So this is like a convention, like the time gets uh, uh, transformed, the Fourier transform in a opposite fashion, uh, which we have taken into account. So now let's uh, consider a particular example where uh, suppose the source, suppose we introduce a source that is stationary at uh, the origin, but it is uh, in time, it is stationary in the sense that time is continuously flowing. So this is a particular function. And if we look that this is a uh, delta cube function. So in time, so in, in terms of time dependence, there is a constant factor dependence. So this is the particular function and this is the Green's function, inhomogeneous Green's, uh, inhomogeneous klein gordon equation. And we need to find the uh, field configuration phi of x given this j of x. So what we do is we take a Fourier transform where phi of x goes to phi tilde of p and this entire thing uh, transforms in this fashion that I showed just before. And now I have to transform this entire factor but I have to do a transform of this thing uh, in terms of time as well as space. Now the delta cube that is on space part will give me a 1 when I do a Fourier transform. But the factor, the constant in the time part, the constancy in the time dependence will give a factor of delta in the uh, energy part or the P0 part. So with this, we see that the Fourier transformed field configuration is of this form with a limit, with a limit epsilon tending to zero because I have deliberately chosen the retarding Green's function denominator here. So I have changed the denominator from p square minus m square to limit epsilon tending to zero this particular denominator. Now I will take a inverse Fourier transform from the momentum space to the position space that I have shown here. Now when I do the dp0 integral, it will give a delta function and will put the zeroth component equal to zero. And hence we see that the field configuration is of this form. But now this is nothing but a Fourier transform of 1 over x square plus omega square kind of term. So now uh, we can look at our integral tables or I have not discussed it here. But the Fourier transform of this will be of this form. So now uh, we have seen that this particular form is like a Yukawa configuration, Yukawa potential configuration. So we have uh, obtained such a configuration by solving uh, inhomogeneous klein gordon equation uh, by using the uh, retarding Green's function. So we used the retarding Green's function because as we discussed in the previous video, um, it, it helps in uh, getting information about the futuristic evolution of the particle, like future of the particle. So that's all for this video. Uh, it was mainly discussion on uh, the Green's function and why Feynman propagators uh, are the Green's function.